Hello and welcome to I Am a Hebrew, Learning Biblical Hebrew Through the Book of Jonah, class number 12. Let me adjust my microphone a little bit. Um, I have a funny, I have a funny thumbnail on my video today because I noticed that StreamYard, which is what I use to, to stream this, had a new feature when I when I scheduled the live stream. I could either add a thumbnail like I normally do. It said, or the AI can produce one. I was like, okay, <laughs> let me see this. So the AI is like, okay, it reads like, I guess the title or so. I don't know what it's supposed to do, but I click the AI and it comes up with this very blah looking thing. It's a blue background with just text on it. Very simple text and a very simple little rectangle that has like the name of the class on it. And I'm like, Am I supposed to be impressed by this? And it even had an option to like add like your thought, your your picture to it based on your profile picture. So I clicked on that and it, you know, silhouetted out myself from the profile picture and just stuck me on there. And it looks really goofy. And I was like, this is the worst thumbnail I've ever seen. Um, and I was like, should I use it? Shouldn't I use it? And I decided, you know what? I'll do an experiment. I'll use this thumbnail and I'll see if it attracts more clicks than usual. You know, who knows? Uh, there's no accounting for taste. But anyway, uh, this is class number 12. This class is brought to you by the Seattle Colel, seattlecolel.com, S-E-A-T-T-L-E-K-O-L-L-E-L.com, providing free classes and other Jewish events and programming to the Seattle community. You can go to their website, check out their wares, make a donation. Uh, and other exciting news, my YouTube channel surpassed 2,000 viewers, uh, more than viewers, really, 2,000 subscribers, I should say. I really have, uh, you know, if you count the individual views, it's a lot more, but 2,000 subscribers. Um, my channel has been approved for channel memberships, which means you can go on my YouTube channel and there's a button that says join. You can click join. And for $5 a month, you could become a member of my channel. Now, what does that do for you? Not a whole lot. It does obviously support the channel to some degree. But what it does do is there will be uh, new videos will be set to members only for a certain period of time before they become public. So members will get a sneak preview, um, a sneak preview or early access called early access. Let's say for example, tonight's class right now, it's open and free for everybody. But I'm, um, my thought right now is to make the class members only after the class is over, make it members only for the first week. And then next week before the next class, we'll make it open to the public. And basically if people want to, um, see the class within a week of when it's when it's published so uh which will be helpful to keeping up with the series if you want to join live um so it'll encourage people to uh, buy a channel membership otherwise it'll become free after a week anyway um there will also be uh shout outs for the members and lean Adder. i didn't even look at my members list yet i think I, this is the first time i'm announcing it but I think some people noticed that the channel memberships were available and maybe I have like three members already. Um, whoever you are, thank you. And um, and yeah, you'll get priority responses from me for, for messages you send me. There are some perks that are built in. It should be when you, when you purchase the membership, it should tell you what the perks are. Likewise, tonight in the live stream, if you're on YouTube, you can buy super chats and super thanks. There's a little dollar sign in the chat box. Um, you could purchase special enhanced comments, um, which go to support the channel. We'll get my attention quickly and my uh, expedited response. Um, we have, oh yeah, so there is a link in the, in the chat. It's in the email that I sent. If you're on my email list, if you want to be on my email list, rabbi at rabbirafimalat.com. Uh, you will get the links for the live studio. We have two people in the live studio now. Aside from me, you'll be able to participate in the class um, live and interactive. Um, the uh, 
In those emails will be the links to the resource sheet as well, which is also linked in the YouTube video description and in the YouTube live stream chat. So if you click that, you'll be able to see the links that we'll be using tonight for the various resources. Um, the young Levite, my friend Chazi, says, I hope all is well, Rabbi. It's better now that you're here, Chazi. What can I tell you? Hello, Juan. Um, Chazi says, 2,000 congratulations, Yagata Umatsasa, which means you put in the effort and you achieved the result for which you strove. That's a phrase from the Talmud in uh, Tractate Megillah. So I appreciate that. Thank you, Chazi. Okay, and um, we will go ahead and start the class now. So let me put the... Um, the, the now if you click that link okay so the first thing on the on the sheet um the first thing on the links page is the worksheets you go to the worksheets and i'll put that up we have a ten dollar super chat from tin flanagan is the rabbi going to play ukulele for us you know what but from the thumbnail it's a little misleading if i don't the problem is that my ukulele is in the school building where i teach it's in my classroom. It's not here, but you know what? Uh, Belina Adder, next week, I'll try to remember to bring it. Maybe I'll play some ukulele. I have a, I have some songs that, that maybe I could play for you, some of my cute songs that I've written. I've, I've written a new one just recently for Pesach, for Passover, that I, I think is a lot of fun. But it would be nice to have the ukulele. Um, and we have a new member. Clifford Cohen. Okay, Cliff, welcome to the channel. You've been a long-standing uh, viewer, and uh, now it's offi you're officially a member of my YouTube channel. Thank you so Glad much. Glad to be. <laughs> um, yeah, he says, that was my first thought th seeing the thumbnail was the ukulele. So, yeah, maybe <laughs> I didn't mean to mislead you. That that Like I said, the AI did that automatically for my profile picture. Okay. <laughs> So let's get that um, stuff up on the screen. So here is, here are the links. This is the link sheet. Um, now let's blow it up a bit. This uh, top link is the, is the worksheets. You'll click on that, you'll open that up. And you'll see this. Then you're going to go to file, make a copy, copy of Jonah worksheets. I'm going to put 12 because it's class 12. Um, and we'll work. You'll work in the copy. If you want, you'll work in the copy. Maybe you made a, maybe you, 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 you make it a printout or you're going to make a printout. Um, so we'll go down to. We'll just review the last verse that we did. It's been a few weeks. Um, it's been a very busy time for me, so I'm sorry that I, I haven't been so available on Sundays. And it's going to be busy again because Passover is coming right up. So who knows? Uh, you know, we'll definitely be interrupted for the Passover holiday. Maybe the next week we'll have a class, and then it may go on hi hiatus till after Passover. So um, bear with me on that. So. Here you should see uh, verse 10. I know it's in Hebrew, but uh, this is what we did in the last session. So um, what it says over here is, uh, anashim, The men feared a great fear. Love, and they said to him, they said to Jonah, these are the people on the ship. They said to Jonah, Mazos Asisa, what is this you have done? Anashim, because the men knew. Hashem, that from before Hashem he was running away, he was fleeing. because he told them, John, right, there was a storm, and it was a supernatural storm, and they want they they drew straws to find out who was the cause of the storm, and the um the lot the lots fell over and over on Jonah, and uh, they said, What's your deal? You know, why? Um, and he said, you know. God gave me this mission and I didn't do it and I'm running, trying to run away. And that's why the storm has come upon you. And they said, well, you know, what have you done? And, um, okay. So that was where we left it off. And we're going to start with verse 
11. Any questions before I start? Okay, as always, feel free to speak up at any time, type a question in the chat, whatever you like. Okay, so I'll read it um, with the cantillation, the musical song, and then uh, we'll, we'll discuss the translation. Uh, and in this class, you're going to do the teaching. This is a very easy verse. There's maybe one new thing in the whole verse. Uh, so I'm going to I'm going to ask you to translate it for me. OK, but here's what it says. Um, Vayomiru elav mana aselach v'yishtok hayom. Oh, there's a word missing here. Where where did this? There's a missing word here. How did that happen? I don't know. Something is missing. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna add it in now. I don't know how it got uh, lost. But I could tell from the I could tell just from the music that there there's there's missing bits here because the song is incomplete. Um, I paste in the word here. It's me'alenu, and I knew that me'alenu. We'll just colorize it the way it's supposed to be. So if you made a cop, now I feel bad if you made a copy of my worksheet. So then uh, the worksheet's incomplete. Let me go back to the worksheet and fix it right now, so you can make uh, a new copy and it'll be fixed. And and accept my apologies. I'm I'm only human. Um, I really don't know how that happened. I I like have a memory of of doing this, of making this. It's weird. Um, this is the coloration. Okay, so let me copy this, and I'll put it into the um, original worksheet page. So here here's the original worksheets. Verse 11. It's missing. Look at that. Okay, we'll paste it in there. What? There it is. Okay, now it's pasted the original. You can make a new copy. Sorry about that. Okay, so now your copy will be identified identical to my copy. So again, Vayomirue love mana aselach v'yishtok hayom mei aleinu ki hayom holech v'soer. Okay, so what what what's going on over here? Um, who can help me with this translation? Vayomiru a love. We've already had this a few times, so no mercy over here. What does it mean? Vayomiru a love. Go, people. And they said to him, "Good." And they said to him, um, "This is where where I, I'm, I'm meant to be." Uh, and they said to him, "Yeah, you can see, you can see it." So, and they said to him, because the, remember, the va yud with the u after the shoresh, and the shoresh in the middle, that's and they did, past tense. So, and they, shoresh, aleph memresh, said, past tense, a love is the word l, which means two, and the vav suffix is him. And they said to him, Ma na aselach, right? Ma, go for it, people. What is ma? Anyone? Ma is what? 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 Na ase. So the nun prefix. I believe we had this before. Uh, if not, then I apologize. But. Naase nun prefix is anyone? Naase or nun prefix of naase. The nun prefix is future tense we. So we will. Okay. So normally nun would be we will, but since this is a question, what? So it becomes a question form, not we will, but will we in English. It's like that. What will we? What will we? Right, you wouldn't say what we will. You would say what will we in English, and then this shorish, um, ase, ayin sin hey. Anyone remember that? Do to do. Very good. Okay, uh, Ivan ma is what? Thank you. Good ma an ma na ase. 
What will we do? Thank you, Yvonne. Um, what will we do? What will we do? And excuse me for that spelling. E. I'm messing everything up over here. Let's go back. What will we do? And then we have lach, which is a lamid prefix with a chaf sofit uh, suffix. Okay. So the lamid prefix, and this is a little bit new. It's a little bit new. The lamid is not new. Lamid prefix is? Anyone? It's to or with in this context. So yeah, we could we could do we could we could translate it directly as to. You're right. Like euphemistically, you might change it. You might adjust it in English idiomatically. But we could do two. Okay. Now what we had before a very similar suffix is the chaf sofit with a kamatz cha. Okay. I'm just trying to remember where we had that ending. The cha ending. I know it was in the. It was in the glossary of suffixes. So I know here we had it. Ma cha. And we said, what is your uh, melacha, your work? Okay. And at the time, we defined the cha, this cha suffix as you. your or you. You or your, if you will. And that's what it means here in verse 11 is you. What will we do to you? Now, what I want to clarify here, what I'm, the here's a little star. The comments I'm making now are really level two comments. Okay, so at level one, we're not going to distinguish between what I just said and what I'm about to say, which is it means you. Okay, that's the level one. It means you. What will we do to you? But at level two, for those who who can use a little more here, what is the difference normally between if the prefix, if the suffix rather is ha chaf sofit with the kamatz vowel ha, or when it's just the chaf sofit with a shiva um, mark, which is silent. So it's like lach, just the ch sound without a vowel. What is the difference between those two suffixes? Ha versus anyone know the difference? Normally, not in this case. Here's an exceptional case, and that's why I'm that's why I'm highlighting it. But normally, the difference between those two suffixes would be what? Um, I don't know. Our guess is allowed. <laughs> sure. Does it change it from like you singular to you plural? No, no, it doesn't. But that's a okay. good guess. You, you're on the right track. Normally, it changes it from masculine to feminine. Ha, lecha, lecha would be to you masculine, where the you is a masculine individual. And lach would be to you feminine, where the you is the feminine individual. Um, that's no, but that's not here because they're speaking to a man, Yona. So I just want to explain why, for those who are aware of that, to explain why it is that way over here. Okay. Um, someone's so asking a question. Oh, someone said to <clears throat> her is luck to her. So close is to you. Luck is to you, uh, not to her. Um, Jesse asks, is Vav always and in most prefix cases? So like you said, in most cases, yes. In some cases, no. So it could be but. there, are, But generally speaking, vav prefix is and. Um, the lamid is two, and the suffix is you. My friend DJAC, who's true identity, I won't uh, divulge. Um, and, uh, and here's AC. We have DJAC, and then we have regular AC. I don't know if there's a relation. <laughs> but um, the non-DJ version. Tells us that yes, the chaf so fit, um, the final chaf suffix without the vowel kamat, the without the a uh sound, the just ch suffix is normally you female. Okay, one is male, the other is female. That's correct. So why here when they're speaking again? Everything I'm, all the comments I make now is really like a level two, but for those who who can process this, why when they're speaking to Jonah who's male? Is there a feminine suffix? So here we we'll look at my star. We'll go down here to the notes, and you'll note. Note we note here. Really, there should be a page break here before the next verse. I don't know how that. Oh, because then I added in that extra line. Everything got bumped down or right, whatever. We'll deal with it for now. This is what's known as the pausal form, tsurat uh, hefsek in uh, in in Hebrew. The pausal form. 
So pause of form means when there's kind of a rest in the in the punctuation, if you will. So the vowels shift to indicate the pause. And so while lecha means to you male, in the pausal form, it's lach, and it's still male, even though it mimics a female form. Okay, um, And that's just what's going on over here. What we're looking at here is a, it's a pausal form. So it's masculine pausal form. It's not feminine form. That's all advanced stuff, but I, I did want to clarify it. Okay, And they said to him, what will, what will we do to you? Um, what shall we do to you? What shall we do with you? As Cliff pointed out, is going to be more contextually idiomatic in English. The Yishtokayam. So everything here you should know from the previous modules in this course, except for this Shoresh, which some of you may know anyway. But let's pretend we don't know this. So the Yishto. So just go one bit at a time. What is the Vav? And okay, easy. Vav and now yud prefix. He good. He what? He future tense. Oh right. Sorry. So it's he will. Okay, and this was class number one. This was class number one. The the oft overlooked class number one. We spent a whole class on this. The difference between the yud prefix. And va yud prefix, where the, in fact, we didn't even get to the difference till class two. That's why we ended class one with a very tentative translation, um, which we ended up changing. That we had a vav and a yud, which would seem to be and he will. Um, but when we said once the vav has that ah vowel and it's va yud, it's the um, reversing vav and it goes from future to past. So for those who remember, va yud is and he did. But veyud, this is the standard future tense. And he will. Wait, wait. He could also be what? Yud could mean he or? He will or? It. It will, right. The, where the it is masculine because we have masculine and feminine uh, uh, nouns in, in Hebrew. So an it, a masculine noun, will do this verb, okay? And the identity of this masculine noun that will do the ver do this verb is the next word, and that's hayam. And this should be easy by now. What is hayam? At least the ha should be easy. The Any prefix, huh? The the, the. Um, very good the. And the, and who remembers yam? So, men or the uh, men or the. <sighs> so um, I'm going to spoil it because one of the commenters spoiled a little bit, meaning I wanted to know what yam is, but someone spoiled already the, 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 the verb. Um, so here Yvonne says, it's a little typo. She wrote quite the sea. She means quiet the sea. So let's just take it one piece at a time. Ha yum means the sea. The sea. Yum is sea, right? And the sea will. And the sea will. So that's the ve yud. And it will. And what will? Ha yum, the sea. And the sea will. Okay. And then we have this verb. Uh, shatak. Shin tuf kuf. Shtok, right? means to be quiet, okay? So, and the sea will, I'm going to translate as be quieted. And the sea will be quieted. The yishtok hayam. What will we do to you and the sea will be quieted? Meaning they're asking Jonah, now that we know that the, the purpose of the storm is uh, some kind of retribution against your wrongdoing, what should we do to you so that it will satisfy Hashem will satisfy God and he will remove this storm that is turning the sea and putting us in danger. What what should we do to you or with you that the sea will be quieted? Next word, may alenu. May alenu. Okay, T. Bishop, Shatak. Yeah, so what is he, he has the emoji of the, the this? Yeah, that's right. 
That's right. Trey. That's right. So um, now the next, so the next word is may alenu. Okay, so let's start with one piece at a time. The mem prefix is from. From. And this part of the word alenu is al, and al means upon. Upon. Good. Good. From upon. And then the new suffix tells us. Ah, uh, Ivan. You nailed it, Ivan. Us. Okay. New is us. From upon us. And the sea will be quieted upon us. And they said to him, what will we do to you? And the sea will be quieted upon from, from upon us. Right? Right now the sea is stormy upon us. We want the sea to be quieted upon us. How do we get the sea to be quieted upon us? What do we need to do to you, with you, so that the sea will be quieted from upon us? Okay. Uh, next bit. Ki hayam. So let's go with ki. What is ki? Because. 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 And again, hayam. Same word. Hayam. Ayam is the sea. The sea. Because the sea. Holech Visoer. Now, actually, I translated was, and that's not correct. Is. This is the present tense. Okay. Um, not that it couldn't be translated as was based on what will follow, but I'm adjusting my own translation. And, and I'll explain. Uh, if you have a if you have your own sheet, you could change it like I did, or um, if you printed it, you could cross it out and write it in is, and, I, and I'll tell you, I'll share with you soon why I'm doing that. Okay? Baholech is the Shoresh Hey Lamed Chaf, so feet, right? Hey Lamed Chaf, which means what? Walk or go. To go, to walk, very good. Um, the C is, if you will, going. This air so vav um, prefix. Go ahead. Come on, guys. Normally and, but I think it's the other one. No, it, it, it it's you and. Understand? It's okay. and. Going and so air. Now so air. We we had it before, so you should be able to translate this so air we got tim we got going and uh yvonne got and yeah uh bishop says return I'm not I sure where it. you're getting that from let's not return although we may have that yeah. later uh oh, so where no one it, remembers so where what i don't remember it but i but return doesn't sound so weird to me because I was thinking going like, you know, as an emotion, like it's tossing them going. And yeah, it, 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 is, it is going, it is going, but I want to show you where we had so air. Um, let's see if I can find it. Um, I'm going backwards. I just want to prove to you. That we had it. Uh, I think I mean, might have missed it, but it'll, it'll come up again, okay? So if there. we go here where it says, Vahisa Argadol, this is just to give you the context, right? And Hashem cast, this is going to come up again, a great wind to the sea, Alayam, Vahisa Argadol, and there was a great storm, storm, right? Um, there was a great storm. So Sa'ar is a storm. And it's also used as a verb, well, like it is in English. Okay, you could have a storm, and you can have two storm, right? The and because the sea is going and so where it's the gerund of storming. Storming, the sea is going and storming. Okay, now that is a Hebrew euphemism, but it holech um, It could mean a few things. It could mean it's it. 
It could mean it's carrying on and continuing to be stormy. Or it could be it's increasing in its storminess. It's, it's continually storming more and more. So they're like, listen, we got to do something because the, the, the storm is getting worse. It's progressing. It's progressing. Um, it's going and storming. It's continuing or even increasing to storm. Now, I'll just explain to you why I changed this translation. Uh, when I initially read this, they said to him, what will, you, what, what will we do to you and the sea will be quieted from upon us? I put an end quotes over there. Ki hayam holech v'sower. And and then the verse that like the, if you will, the uh, objective narrator is telling us why they said this because the sea was going and storming and they were concerned so they said this to him. But I saw actually in at least one of the commentaries and I didn't see anyone argue that this is part of the quotation. They're saying so. So I was reading it as they oh. said this to him because the sea was going and storming and since going and storming is sort of present tense you could say it was going not that it went and like stopped it was continuing to go i felt that that was consistent with the present tense verb here and it could be in biblical hebrew that's not inconsistent with the way present tense is used in other places to indicate something that happened in the past but that it was continuously happening it was going so the present tense is used even to indicate something happening in the past that's how i thought it was used here but i saw in one of the commentaries that they're saying this as it's happening what should we do to you this to quiet the sea quiet the storm from upon us we need to quiet the storm from upon us right now because the storm is going and storming the sea rather the sea is going and storming it's continuing to uh you know churn up and and threaten to destroy us so that is what they're saying over here so other than this verb here of uh, uh shatak having to do with being quiet, uh, we had no new bits in this verse. Because even so air, storm, we had before. So this was a verse that like 90% trans could translate without me based on previous classes. Okay, any questions on this verse? Because we have some extra time and we can get started on the next verse if people feel ready to do it. TJAC Storm, he's right. Ivan Martinez, new member. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, okay, so I don't I didn't hear any questions, so I'm gonna go to the next verse if that is cool. And stop me anytime. Okay, so let me put a page break over here. Um, because I don't want it on the same page as the notes from the previous verse. Insert page break. Okay. Okay, Jonah chapter one, verse 12. Okay, now let's see what we could do over here. I'll I'll read it with the song, and then we'll try to translate it. There's again maybe nothing new here at all, at all. Maybe no. There's but there's I think one thing that's new here. Vayomer alehem sauni vahatiluni el hayom v'yishtok hayom me alechem. Ki yodeya oni ki vishali hasar hagado haze alechem. Okay, so what does that what does that mean? Vayomer alechem. So th this should be relatively simple. Vayomer is pretty simple. We have the vayud prefix, which is. And he will. Right. Oh, so the yud, the yud would be and with the yud prefix, he will. Uh, but fa yud is the reversing vav. So it makes it from the future tense into the past tense. So from and he will, it becomes and he was or did. And he did, right? And he did what? Amar. <sighs> So Ivan tells us he said, okay, by Yomer, and he said, okay, and Aleph Memrish is why is it caps lock? Is to say, and he said, he said, and then we have again Alehem. The Aleph Lamet is like the word L, okay, two, 
And then the suffix hem, we may have had before. Them. them. Okay. Them. Ali Hem. And he said to them. So now Jonah is responding. And he says, Saw Uni. Okay. Saw is a new show rash for us. I don't think we had it before because when I looked in the glossary, it wasn't there. So I added it today. So let's peek at it. Okay, here's our glossary. And we'll go down all the way down to the letter sin, which is close to the end. Uh, no, it's not. My bad. So it's not there. Why? Because this is a Shoresh where we have one of the Yona letters, the Yud, Vav, Nun, He, those four letters that, so to speak, fly away from the Shoresh. They're part of the Shoresh, but when they get incorporated, conjugated into a verb, they will often disappear from that form. So this is one of those cases where it actually starts with a nun. Okay. The shorsh is nun sin aleph. Nun is one of those flyaway letters. So we're, we're stuck in this word sauni with just the, just the sin aleph part, which means to lift, to carry, or to bear up. Okay. So um, let's go to the verse. Okay. Sauni. And the ni suffix the ni suffix is um, also in the in the glossary. It's sort of an abbreviation of the Let's word see. ani. Okay, that's what it means. I or me, right? So sauni means lift me, or could be carry me, right? Lift me up, carry me up, bear me up. Okay, so sauni, lift me, and I added the, this. Uh, knee also to the glossary and the quizlet and this is also in the quizlet uh all the links are in that link sheet that we started with okay sauni he says lift me vahati luni al hayam so this is easy um the vav prefix is what sorry i'm just looking and and good past and this show us here with the tet and the Lamed we had before. Does anyone remember it? So it, I'll give you a chance. You can think about it. I'm going to scroll back to where we had it before, okay? Way, way back many centuries ago. It has to be tossed, but I don't know. Okay, you're right. You're right. So I'll show you where we had it. So you can, we have you know, it. <laughs> I'll show you here. Um, when when uh, the storm first happened, and it says, Vayiru'u, this is in verse 5. Vayiru'u ha-malachim. The uh, uh, sailors feared. Vayiz'aku, and they cried out. Ish el elohav, each man to his god, or to his gods. And then it says, Vayatilu et ha -kelim. And they, teal, there it is. There's that. That shorash, if the the full shorash is again natal with a nun, the nun disappears in the conjugated form, like in nasa that we just had, and like here, and they cast hakelim the vessels. They were trying to lighten the ship, so they were throwing things off the ship, right? Um, so they they cast. So he says um, to them. Vahati Luni and knee. cast ni again that ni suffix. Huh? Oh, I'm finger spelling ani. Me. <laughs> well, well, we had it here. Sauni lift me. Vahati Luni and cast me. Me. Good. L Hayam. L is two. Two. And here's Hayam again. Uh, the sea. the sea and cast me to the sea v and now look at the look at the difference look at it again here it is again ve yishtok hayam not va yud future but v this is future so ve yud is and yeah and it or he, it or right he, and and, and it. it and the it is this hayam the sea and the sea 
just like we had in the last verse. The, this language in this verse is very um, similar to the previous verse, parallel, right? And the sea will, there it is again, shatak. Oh, yeah. And the sea will. So again, the, the will, this future, that's from this yud, okay? It will. What will? Hayam, the sea. And the sea will, shatak, will be quieted, like we had in the last verse. And the sea will be quieted, calmed, if you will, pacified, right? Uh, silenced. And the sea will be quieted. May Alechem. Okay. In the last verse we had, we want the sea to be quiet. If you talk here, May Alenu from upon us. So he says, if you throw me over the ship, then the sea will be quieted. May Alechem, which means. From again or because? From. from. Good. It'll be quieted from. Al. Huh? Oh, sorry. Oh, we have Tim. From upon you. Okay. Tim to the rescue. So Al is again on or upon. And the chem suffix is you. And here is the difference between singular and plural, Sandy. We had in the previous verse, the chaf. Here's the letter chaf. When the chaf is in the suffix, like in the last verse, uh, lach, to you. So the chaf, for those who are confused, this is the final form of chaf. Kaf or chaf, when it appears as the last letter, becomes elongated like this. So uh, the chaf at the suffix is you or your. Um, this is singular. You singular. But chem, as it is in verse um, 12, is you plural. So he's talking to the group of sailors and he says it'll be quieted from upon you, plural. Okay? Okay. Key. Keep wanting to say he is who, but it's more than it's not. Well, me, me is who. Oh, thank you. Me. So it rhymes. Key is because 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 mm -hmm. Yodeya Ani. So uh, here's the Shoresh Yud Dalit Ayin Yada, which means. So we'll make it easy. What's Ani? Me. Me or? I. I, right? I, and then we have the Shorish Yada. I what? So Yvonne to the rescue Yay. says <laughs> to know, okay? It, uh, yada is to know. So I know because I know. Why am I in caps again? Because I know. And here we're going to go back to something we learned before, but we're, we're almost at the end here. Because I know and have the word key again here. Now, this really shouldn't be yellow. It should really be green. Um, key. So I had key here because. So is it, again, this should be green. I miscolored it. Is is key I know. because that. again? Uh, because I know because? No. That? That. That's right. Because I know that, remember, key could also mean that. Because I know that Bishelli. Now, this Bishel, Bishel, we had a couple times before, okay? Um, and it was, it was, you know, a little complicated. But I just want to show you where we had it before two times. Uh, and you may remember what it means. Because it's three prefixes. Bi, which is in or with. She, which is that, and Lamed, which is two or four. It's like in that four, and then the suffix E. Okay, but where did we have it before? Um, I must have passed it here. When In verse uh, seven, and they said each man to his fellow, uh, go and let us cast lots, 
and we will know the and we will know like like Jonah says now and because I know right that what bishelimi bishelimi and we said at that point it was like on account of whom me is who as like you pointed out before so in that for whom meaning for whom on account of whom for the sake of whom because of whom Hazos lanu is this evil Hazot, this evil lanu happening to us will cast lots and will know on account of whom this evil is happening to us and they cast lots and it fell on Jonah and then in verse 8 um they said to him tell us please ba'asher lemi hazot right uh, and and so we said that she the prefix she which is that is equivalent to the word asher which means that so ba asher le is the same as be she le bet shin lamid prefix in in that for whom this evil is this evil meaning you for whom this evil has occurred tell us please uh, about yourself what is your work where did you come from etc so again it's on account of on account of, Bishel, on account of. So um, we had that before. I'm just pointing out it's not new. We had it two, to two times before. So now we get back to this verse. Uh, I, I, you damn, because I know, key that, Bishel-li, on account of. And then the E suffix. Chiwikyod. Right. Um, Does that make it whom again? Who? Mr. Bishop. Uh, no, that's me. Me. But oh, right. Just the just the chirik vowel that's under the lamid and the yud, the e suffix. Uh, does anyone remember? Okay. I'll, uh, if we look at our suffix list in the glossary, find it over. Where is it? Here in the pronouns, e suffix or i suffix could be me or my. Okay, so um, and here's the new one also. Ni is me, like we had sauni vahatiluni lift me and and cast me. So e also is me. Um, so if we look back at the worksheet, okay. Kivishali, that on account of me, me, on account of me, Hasa'ar Hagadol Haze. Okay. What? Right. Sandy, I don't hear you. Speak up. Oh, sorry, I said the C. Uh, the, the word C does not appear in this line. That's not C, Sir. Oh, sorry. Okay. Sa'ar. Sa'ar. Okay. Not Yam. Yam is C. Sa'ar. You're right. We had so air in the previous verse. We had so air, so right? I get the sea. Hayam holech so air was going and so air. So, so air. it was storming, right? So um, a saar in the noun form storm? is the storm, storm. right? So, and then we have the adjective, ha gadol. The big, big, big or big or great, right? Hasar ha gadol, the great storm, and then ha ze, and ze means this or the uh, this, right? So when you put it together, hasar ha gadol ha ze, even though in English the order of these words would be reversed in English syntax this great storm in Hebrew it's the reverse it's storm great this but that's just you have to know the difference between Hebrew and English um, remember that in English the adjective comes after uh, it comes before the noun great storm in Hebrew the adjective comes after the noun first the noun and then we modify the noun right um, great storm and then this comes at the end of that uh, so so in English, the storm, the great, the this, 
It doesn't it doesn't quite make sense in English. So we so idiomatically it would be this great storm. This great storm. Um so because I know that on account of me, this great storm implied state of being, being verb is this great storm is to Alechem. To you? Well, that would be Alechem if this was an Aleph. Then that would be like L too, but Alechem mm -hmm. with an ayin is Al, which means on, on or upon. On. So this great storm is upon Chem, like we exactly like we had before. May Alechem from Ew. upon you. So Alechem without the prefix from is just upon you. So putting it together, okay. And he said to them. Lift me and cast me to the sea, and the sea will be quieted from upon you, because I know that on account of me, this great storm is upon you. Okay? It's pretty clear. Pretty clear. And really, the only new element of this entire verse, I think, uh, maybe two two new things, was this shoresh, sa from nun sin aleph, nasa, to lift, to carry. Ni suffix, which is another form of me. Sauni. And we had the ni twice. Hatiluni. But everything else was really just repetition from previous verses. So we're really, um, at this point, um, learning a great command of the biblical lexicon to be able to just putting pieces together from the first, essentially, 10, 11 verses of chapter 1 to translate, you know, almost the entirety of, of the, the ensuing verses. So um, we really have covered a lot. Um, and, oh, Tim Flanagan became a YouTube member. Thank you, Tim. Uh, we've, we've covered a lot. And for those who will review the course and will uh, practice on the Quizlet um the Quizlet resource that I have on the resource link sheet, uh, you'll really get a lot out of it and uh, find yourself gaining more and more mastery. And, um, you know, just keep it up. Just keep practicing, and it'll come little by little. Don't worry. You, it's not, not going to come overnight. Uh, what are you saying? Yeah, I was just going to ask, Rabbi, if you wanted to speak to the Haruk and the Vav, uh, you know, the... Uh, the U sound in Sauni and in, um, I think it was, yeah. The okay. Oh, because I made a star on it. Oh, uh, well, yeah. Just because of what that means, why those letters are there, why that, why that U sound is. is there okay. To... Yeah. I, so this was, I, I kind of left it to the end and forgot about it because I wasn't sure if we'd finish in time <clears throat> and, um, and it's a little bit of a complicated a grammatical thing. This is another one of those like level two things. I'll address it quickly and then we'll call it a night because uh, our time is up. But essentially, it's the reason I left it the way it is is because it's pretty easy based on the way I broke it down. Oh, lift me, right? Lift me. Now, why does this mean lift me? And what is this? What is this ooh doing there, right? Why isn't it just like sa me? What's what's the ooh? So for those who are interested in a little more depth in the grammar, so. We looked at, let's take a look down at the star and the note that I put here, okay? This form that we're looking at is what's called the imperative form, or in Hebrew, it's called the tzivui. Tzivui literally means command, the command form, imperative form, which means essentially it's a future tense you will form. It's basically what it is. It's you're saying you will do this, except rather than, and we've done, I've covered this before in the course, but I'm, I'm now repeating myself. But rather than I'm, I'm describing what will happen in the future, you will do this. I'm telling you to do it. So how do I do that? What I do is first I, I create the future tense form. And then I modify the future tense form. So let's take that one step at a time. What is the future tense form? The future tense form of you, right? Second person, you, you will, is putting a, the letter tav in front of the suffix. OK, um, so if I wanted to say you singular masculine, let's make it very simple. Lift, I would say T sa. I would take the sin and the aleph. I would put a tough in front of it and I would say T sa. That means you 
you will lift. If I want to say you plural, it gets an u at the end. Okay, so it would be tough in the beginning, chorish in the middle, u at the end. So when we plug in the shoresh nasa and the nun drops out, it becomes tis u, tis u. You will lift. That's the, that's the plain future tense form of second person. You will, you will, tis u. You will lift. To make it command form, I just drop off the tough. I shorten it by dropping off the tough. And from tis u, the word becomes si u. Si u means lift. But I'm commanding the second person, you, plural, to do this. Lift. Si u. Lift. Okay? So when in our verse, we have si u, imperative form, future tense, right? Imperative form, plural. You do this, lift, and then suffix ni. Lift what or who? Lift ni. Sa'uni. Sa'uni is uh, imperative form, lift me. Okay, so that's just the explanation of why the form looks the way it does for those who can digest a little more grammar. But uh, that is going to take us to the end of the hour. And I'm going to, um, I'm going to have to, uh, uh, head out. Um, T. Bishop, he said he's going to pair the new shorts with emojis. Uh, now, T. Bishop, if I'm not mistaken, uh, reached out to me between classes and um, uh, um, advocated to me the use of pictures uh, together with words and showed me a, a, a resource on YouTube where, where people pair pictures with Hebrew words uh, as, a, as a memory aid. And I think that's actually very good. Uh, it's just more homework than I've had the opportunity to to do to prepare. So as it is, I don't yet have pictures, but I know uh, uh, T. Bishop likes the pictures, and and I encourage him to continue using visual aids. <laughs> oh, Shua Bass, blast from the past. Mrs. Mild says hi, Shua. It's great to see you in the live stream. Let's catch up. Um, but I have to go, so um, we'll say we'll say goodbye to everyone. Yvonne says thanks. You're welcome. Thank you, Rabbi. You are welcome, Cliff. Thank you, Sandy. You were in the hot seat tonight. You were such a good sport. Uh, we really. Um, it's the first time I've known what's going on. <laughs> yeah, and I was that, signing, I so I was using the tactile version of pictures. <laughs> there you go. There you go. So the, do what works for you. Uh, Mrs. Mollett, Shua sends his regards. Um, T. Bishop says, thank you. You're welcome. Um, yeah, so thank you, Sandy, for being a great sport. We, we put your feet to the fire tonight, and uh, you didn't let us down. So, you know, God willing, we'll see you next week or whenever the next class is going to be. Stay tuned because Passover is coming up, and there are sure to be some interruptions, okay? Please uh, bear with me. And once again, for those who didn't hear the announcement at the beginning of the class, channel memberships are available. You can go to my YouTube page, um, Rabbi Rafi Mallet, and click the Join button. For $5 a month, you can become a member. You get early access to uh, members-only content. You get shout-outs. You get uh, special emojis or some other perks like that and uh, priority response for your uh, messages and comments and emails and so forth okay so thanks for all the support and everyone have a great week and we'll see you next time have a good week thank you bye bye